if you want to make decisions together as a group, rather than just as one single individual, you can take advantage of the voting feature in 1000 Minds. With the voting feature, each person can give their input equally when making trade-offs. You can do this together in a conference room or virtually, where one person will be the controller who manages the voting process. The controller shares their screen, either virtually or on a projector, so that everyone can see the instructions and results clearly. The controller is also in control of making the actual trade-off after gathering the votes. Only the controller needs to have a 1000 Minds account. Participants do not need to have an account in order to vote. To enable voting, on the trade-offs page, open the options menu on the right and click enable voting. This will give you two options through which you can invite people to vote. You can share a code which you can tell people to enter if they go to vote.1000minds.com or you can share a link with them which won't require them to enter any code. If voting is done with everyone in the same room and the controller is sharing their screen via a projector, you can show the instructions clearly for everyone to see by clicking on show instructions which causes a dialog box to appear that shows the code and link in a larger font. To keep record of any suggestions, concerns, or other comments that anyone has, you can enter comments by clicking on the comment button down here. The comments will only be visible for the controller and no one else will be able to add comments. Any comments made can be reviewed later on the review and undo page under trade-offs. Once you've enabled voting, this is what the page will look like for the controller. Below the choices, you will see how many people have already voted and whether you're still missing a vote from anyone. Be careful not to click on any of the alternatives or the hourglass button just yet, because doing so will register your choice as a final decision for that trade-off and move on to the next question. If you've accidentally done this, you can always click on undo in the bottom left corner to go back. This is what the page will look like for any voter. They can only see the trade-off question, cast their votes, and see how many people have voted. They can change their vote too if they like, until you show everyone the votes. When you're ready for everyone to see the results, click show votes. This will show you and every participant how your group voted and prevent any participant from changing their vote or from adding their votes if they hadn't already voted. At this stage, you'll see how much agreement or disagreement there is within the group. This is a good time to discuss why people chose the trade-offs they made, which can help participants understand each other's view and establish meaningful consensus within the group. After such a discussion, Clicking Reset Votes and letting participants vote again will often produce a very different outcome. You should decide ahead of time how much agreement is enough to proceed. In other words, whether to proceed with a selection if more than half the voters agree or if a higher proportion is required. Note that the votes can be distributed among the left, the right, and their equal, so you will sometimes not have a clear majority. After agreeing on a trade-off, the controller will make the trade-off on behalf of the group by selecting the appropriate choice. If the group struggles to reach consensus for a trade-off, you can always skip that trade-off and it may or may not come back later. Once you've finished making all the trade-offs, you will probably want to move on to show your group the preference values that resulted from the group discussion. Any alternatives ranked according to your expert judgment or perhaps even a value for money chart. You may also want to consider sending out a preferences survey before the meeting so that people can get accustomed to the criteria and the process of making trade-offs. It is usually also a good idea to start any voting exercise with a few test questions so people can get the hang of it, then undo them and start the process again. Voting is pretty easy, and it's surely fun. It sometimes helps to have a facilitator working the room and another person controlling this page and helping people with getting their phones and laptops set up. 
As always, it's good to try this out with colleagues, friends, and family first so that you can get used to driving the system.